Welcome everybody. I'm happy you are here. Welcome. I am thrilled to be with all of you today talking about nighttime eating. This is a biggie. This is a huge area that gets in to so many, it kind of creeps into so many of our lives. Oh my goodness. This late time nighttime eating and we're going to discuss it and I want to give you three ways you can get in front of it that are going to just really help you today. You're going to just want to kiss me all over the place. Speech, speaking of kissing all over the place, you guys have to tell me what to do. So I had a friend who got um, whose daughter got COVID who I was with on Sunday. Now I have been vaccinated completely. What am I supposed to do? Love your opinions on that because I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So y'all have to tell me what the protocol is. I will look it up if nothing else. But I just was wondering what the protocol is because I don't want to get anybody sick, obviously. But I am feeling fine. And let's jump in, okay? Let's talk late night eating. So I'm going to give you three things you can do today. But I want to kind of dial it back. When we look at changing any habit, let's look at the habit loop, okay? The habit loop in our mind where we know really creates weight loss or creates any type of habit. So first you have an urge, you have a trigger. So when you look at your evening, I'm going to tell you about some different types of triggers. And I want you to write down or start recognizing, ah, this is my late night trigger that's happening to me. So let's look at the different trigger types that there are. There are one, two, three, four, five, six triggers, everybody. There are six triggers that I want you to be aware of that urge you and can trigger you to start um, or think about food. Can trigger you to want to eat, overeat, binge, okay? So you might want to write these down just so you have them or know them. You don't have to. You can just keep replaying this. And of course, I'll have this podcast available for all of you tomorrow. So here are the different types of triggers that urge you or might urge you to eat. You could have a location trigger or a place trigger. This could be a specific location like a certain restaurant or a certain place that you go. It could be your kitchen table, which could be, hey, that's my overeating. Or it could be a place where you go. It's a location or place. It could be every time you visit your mother, your sister, your brother, your kids, you find yourself overeating. You may have a vacation spot, a place that you go on vacation that you go, oh my gosh, every time I go, I end up overeating. So I want you to be aware of, okay, at night, is there a location or a place trigger that is in the works for you? Now, you might find, hey, not at night, but I got different location triggers that are happening throughout the day, so this is good for you to be aware of. The next trigger type that you might be having is a feeling. Feeling lonely at night. Feeling bored. Feeling overly tired. That was one for me. I thought, oh my goodness, you know, if I'm so tired, if I could just wake up, if I could just have a little more energy, and I somehow thought food would give me that energy, um, and I would turn to food. So it could be a feeling trigger that's happening at night. Lonely, bored, tired, angry, uh, wanting a release, wanting to shut down, wanting to reward yourself. That's a feeling. Oh, I I did so good today. I did so great. I made it through the day. I'm feeling this need for a reward. That can be that can be a trigger. Another type of trigger are objects. And I like to think of these as like the couch, your bed. It's similar to place, but slightly different. Um couch, bed, TV is an object trigger. And you go, "Oh, that turns on." Oh, I want food. And you start associating every time I watch TV, I relax. And in that relaxation, that's also a trigger of feeling relaxed. I want to eat. Another trigger type are smells. What you smell. Somebody's baking cookie, uh, baking cookies, excuse me, in the other room. You smell that. You smell, you're going for a walk and you smell somebody barbecuing. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, I want to eat. So smells, 
certain smells can trigger your brain to think about that time or ignite some ability or desire for food. And then you have people triggers. And your people triggers are, could be your spouse, a loved one, your partner, your kids, your, I would even put, they're not quite people, but dogs, animals, all of those can trigger you to want to eat. So I want you to think about your late night triggers. And I want you to think about what's happening for you and feel free to share with me in the comment section. Are you having a location or a place trigger, a feeling trigger, an object trigger, a smell trigger, a sound trigger, or a people trigger? I didn't talk about the sound trigger, like um, the sound of something going off can trigger you. That's more in the PTSD world more um, than with food. But that can also be a trigger. What's happening for you? And oftentimes, you have the combination. You have the combination of TV, couch, trigger. TV, bed, feeling relaxed or wanting to relax, trigger. So it's a combination that can start triggering this loop, the habit loop of wanting food. So if this is happening at night, I would just want you to be aware. What is triggering this response? For me, a lot of times it's been husband or it's been bed or it's been TV. Okay, those have been in the past what I would say my big triggers. Feeling and location. Okay, awesome. Feeling the triggers. This is great. It's so good for me to see what all the, all the above. TV in the evening with my spouse relaxing at the end of the day. Right. And wanting a reward. Awesome. Awesome. So I want you to think about this and I want you to think about, okay, we don't need to make any of this wrong. These are just, this is how our brain starts to loop things and program in this desire for food. That's it. We're programming it. We program it, program it, program it. And all of a sudden it becomes a habit and we go, and now then you don't even have to think about it. You're like, oh, lay down, ooh, trigger, want something. Okay. Now, I also know that you all want to lose weight and feel amazing in your bodies and you should, you absolutely should. So we need to move through some of these triggers. We need to shift and change some of these things. So I want you to think about what does your naturally thin, best, beautiful, thin within you look like in the evening? See, we have to be clear about what do you want it to look like? Who do you want to be in the evening? Because if you say, hey, I don't want that to change, then fine, you can change other aspects of your, of your life to lose weight. You don't have to change this evening routine and this pattern. But if you would like to, then what do you want that to look like? So that's the first key, is getting your thin vision for your evening in check. What do you want that to look like? And I literally want each of you when, you know, after this or while I'm talking, I want you to write down what does that look like? What are you literally doing instead of eating, chilling, relaxing? What are you doing instead? That would be, that would help you lose weight, help you feel totally in control of your body, where food's off the table, literally and figuratively, and you are losing weight. What's happening? What's occurring? Like that is where I want your mind to go so that you become solution oriented and so that we're directing your brain specifically directing it so you are clear of what your healthiest best self looks like. Now, here's what I want you to remember. Having a couple Hershey's kisses, there's nothing wrong with that. Having a little this and that, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times what doesn't feel very good is when it feels out of control, when you feel like you can't stop, or when you go unconscious. When it's part of the evening, like, oh, as part of my dinner, a little bit later, I'm going to have three Hershey's Kisses, and it's kind of part of it, and you know you want something sweet. We don't have to give up those things. I prefer that you're hungry for <clears throat> that evening snack, if you will, or that those food items. 
But you know that feeling when it feels out of control and then you tell yourself you're going to change and then you tell yourself that the next night and the next night and the next night and all of a sudden three decades have gone by and you're like, I've been saying this for 30 years. Why do I keep telling myself this? It's not going to change. I got to do something different. So we have to do something different. The thing I want you to do first off is get clear. What is it that you want it to look like instead? Because if your mind doesn't have a clear direction or picture, then it won't know what to do. But if you can help it by saying, okay, here's how my thin life is going to look in the evening. I'm going to, we're going to put some, so here's how it is in my house. You want me to share with you? I put the, we all eat, put food away. Sometimes if I'm still a little bit hungry, I may have a few little Reese's. Most of the time, or something, a little sweet, most of the time dinner happens. I go for a walk with my husband many nights, and then I grab a spin drift, which is just like a bubbly or something like that. I grab a spin drift, bring it upstairs, get into my jammies. We all get ready for, they get ready for bed. I'm a late night person. I hang out for many hours after they go to sleep, but then I just want to cozy in. I still want to cozy in and watch TV. I don't want to get rid of my TV watching or my book reading or my chilling out in front of my phone. I want that. And I also don't want to be the person that has to eat all through the night as a coping mechanism to chill and relax. So I'm very clear that I didn't want that. What I wanted to do is paint the picture instead. So I want to make sure you're very clear about this. I don't want you telling yourself, I don't want to eat at night. Your brain doesn't know don't want. It's just going to say eat at night. It can see that. Instead, I want you to paint the picture so your brain understands what do you want. Are you lying in bed? Are you on the couch snuggling in with a, on a, you know, with a blankie and watching your favorite shows? And you have a little cup of tea next to you or a beautiful glass of lemon water or spindrift in my case and water. Paint the picture the way you want it. What I see happens a lot is you all are painting this picture or you're telling your brain, I don't want to see myself. I don't want to be eating late at night. <laughs> Paint what you want to see. Your brain doesn't know don't wants. It just sees whatever words pop out in your mind. And so if I say, I don't want to have sugar at night, guess what it th sees? It can't see don't want, it just sees sugar. So if I wanna say, oh, I wanna have a night where I put the kitchen to bed, I bring myself upstairs, the kids go to bed, and I lay and I get in my comfies and I read or I write and then I just relax in front of the TV, my brain can see that. What do you want your brain to see? What's the change? Who do you need to be in order to be that person? And then the other question is, are you willing to make this adjustment and shift? Because if it feels like, no, I'm not ready. I'm not, I can't do that. That's so hard. What are you willing to do then to slowly move to that person who has an evening, an amazing evening, a filled up evening, enjoys your evening and gets to lose weight as a result of that, wakes up in the morning going, hallelujah, I had a great morning. I had a great night. I didn't, I don't feel like I just ate the whole world and now I'm swollen and I'm puffy and I feel disgusting and can barely get up. And they go, okay, tonight's gonna be different. I'm really gonna change that. And then the next night happens and the next night. You don't have to make some of the food wrong. It can be incorporated. But what I would like to do is make that when it is incorporated, you are connected to the food, you are looking at it, you're tasting it, and it is a conscious experience. It is not something that you go unconscious with. If you're going unconscious, I would much rather you go unconscious with a bubbly, with frozen ice cubes with gum, with something that's not going to give your body this big caloric load that you're going to be struggling with to get off later. Okay? 
So the first thing, I want you to have a vision. Second thing, the next thing we do is called segment ritual intending. This is a strategy. This is a neuro-linguistic programming strategy. Once you've written out what you want, okay, what you can, what you see as your ideal evening or a realistic evening. And when I say ideal, I just mean when you're naturally thin and it, it fits into your life and it feels amazing and it feels totally doable. Um, and it's the, the thing you that you've been craving, you want to have that evening. But it also, I really want it to be realistic. I don't want it to be like some unrealistic thing that's just like never going to happen and you're going to be hitting your head against the wall. It's got to be realistic. But uh, then we're going to do something called segment ritual intending. Here's how seg segment ritual intending works. You take the segment of the day, so it's the evening, and you can do this with any trigger that you're having, but we're going to use it for the evening because we're talking about evening. You take the segment and in your mind, you're going to rehearse it. Segment ritual intending. We're intending for, an, uh, for a new segment and we're going to rehearse it. Okay. So you see it playing out in your mind and you're making it loud and bold and big and exciting, and you're seeing why you want to do it. So I'm seeing myself putting the kitchen to bed, going outside, we have a little outside refrigerator, going outside, grabbing my spin drift, going and then having, bringing it upstairs, feeling amazing that I put the kitchen to bed, and I'm excited to have my evening where I'm snuggling up, into my bed, relaxing, saying goodnight to the kids, hanging with my hubbers or by myself, either way, I'm pretty happy with, and and watching TV or reading a book, okay? I see it in my mind and then I do it over and over, okay? And you may wanna rehearse this about five times. When you're rehearsing this, the more you can bring in sounds, feelings, the vision that's real bright and bold and exciting and beautiful and can do, the more it will hook into your head, hook into your brain, hook into your being and manifest. But if that image, if you're doing this rehearsal and it's black and white and it's boring and it's not so exciting and you're like, and all of a sudden you think about the food and you're like, that's bright, that's bold, that's exciting, that's fun, you're not going to make the change in the evening because you're making that much more fun, the eating more fun than the new experience of being light and lean and healthy and naturally thin in the evening. And I want you to experience that. So when you're doing the segment ritual intending, you're making that vision bright. We're igniting your dominant senses, your vision, your auditory, your kinesthetic. How does it feel? How does it look? What's the experience? It's like watching an amazing movie, like the best movie, which is hello, your health, your new way of being in the evening. Make it bright and bold and fun and alive inside of your mind. Don't make it drab and boring and de depriving in, in the feeling. Make it alive. Yep, segment ritual intending. It is a neuro-linguistic programming tool, I believe. I've used it for so many years that I believe that's where I learned it in my neuro-linguistic programming um, certification and training. So that's what I want you to do. We're going to make it live. We're going to make it bold. We're going to make it cool and alive. Now, things habits get formed, right, in our brain. And so to create new habits, we have to form them actively. If you want to create a new habit, you've got to form it. We've got to create it. We've got to practice it. So I also really like the habit of if I was going to be doing this and creating a new um, ritual for late night eating, I would come upstairs. I say kitchen clothes, grab my spin drift, come upstairs. Then I would plant my feet. I have like a bench because I we go upstairs. I don't watch TV downstairs that much. We come upstairs. Um, and so I have a bench. I would sit on that bench and before the evening happens, before my late night, when I would typically eat happens, I want to ground my energy and do the segment ritual intending repetition in my mind three or four, five times. Literally, it's going to take you two, three, four minutes. 
to repeat it. If it takes you 15 minutes, who cares, right? How awesome is that? You're losing weight, you're feeling amazing, you're seeing results. You're gonna do the segment ritual intending. You're gonna see yourself going through it. You can do it faster. You can make, make each segment go faster and bigger and brighter and make it really, it can go quick. But I want you to feel so awesome about that. So awesome about who you're being and what you're creating. The more you give energy, emotion, feeling into that segment ritual intending, the more you get to be that person. The more that desire, you're igniting this desire inside of you that says, boom, I can do this. I got this. And then I want you to future pace your mind. Future pace just means see yourself in the morning waking up feeling like a rock star. Like, oh, I did this. See, feel your clothes getting looser. See the scale moving down. Do whatever you do as your morning ritual that, that helps you and that you want to experience. See that, feel that, know that that is happening. Okay. And then the third thing, I know I'm giving you a lot today, guys. This is like inner circle stuff, right? Um, third thing is that I want you to reward yourself. When it comes to creating a new habit, right? We've got the cue or the trigger, which we talked about the different types of triggers. We've got the action. Now we're using the segment ritual intending action, right? Of seeing it happen and starting to actually act on it. And then the last thing is the reward. Telling yourself, telling your brain, giving your new programming messages, hey, listen, you did awesome way to do this. So if I were going to do this and have a reward, what the way I do it when I'm changing a habit is I have big calendars up here that kind of just show me what's happening, what my day is like, you know, it's all business up here. But what I like to do when I've done this before, I would just star it. That's as simple as it gets, Lisa. <laughs> I just would come to my, in the morning, I would come up and then I'd start on my calendar and I'd see a star on that day, the, the previous night, showing, hey, listen, I'm a rock star. I did it. Sometimes if I wanted to reward myself, I sometimes would re reward myself ahead of time with the star, which to me kind of was like, mm, you've already rewarded yourself with that star. Guess what? You're going to make it happen because I've already, I've pre-rewarded myself already. And then when I would have four or five stars, which meant that four or five nights I didn't eat in front of the TV or with my husband or when my husband grabbed food or any of that, then I would think about something that was really cool that I wanted. New undies, new bras, new PJs, um, new nail polish, going to get a pedicure, something that was just something loving to do to say, hey, listen, you're awesome. Way to change this habit. Way to be that person. And then after three, four, five times, I would do it again. Until then, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm ritualizing something new. There's a new reward that I'm looking forward to. And I have a way to track it to see if I'm being successful in my new way of being. And all of a sudden, a week, two weeks three weeks, four weeks. It doesn't mean every day has to be perfect, guys, though. That's the key. Like there are times where I might be hungry at night and I have a couple pieces of chocolate, but I'm hungry and we're done. Done. Next. So it's not that it's like, again, I don't want this. I don't want you to put perfection into play here. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what I want for you. I want this to be realistic for your life. Most nights, I want to be the type of person who can go to bed without stuffing my face because I feel so much better about myself in the morning. I don't want to be the person who goes unconscious watching, watching TV and eating. I don't want to be that. And so I want to be somebody that can sip on tea and have a spindrift or something like that and give myself big space and say, awesome, you. And wake up in the morning feeling really proud of what I accomplished. But the way I had to get there, the way I did that was not through force and not through pain. Yes, there were times where your head, this is what I want you to know. There are times where your head 
might scream a little. Come on, we've been doing this. We'll start tomorrow. You've been so good all day. You made it through. Congratulations. Let's just have this. Come on. What are you going to do? If you just expect that, I would just say, you know what? Expect it. I just expected to have that voice in my head. And then I knew it was coming. Oh, here it is. Oh, there it is. She's very loud today. Yep, she is definitely yelling in my ear that she wants to eat. Thank you for sharing. That is just a thought I'm thinking. I am not hungry. This is just a thought I'm thinking. This is just old programming. And for me to create new programming, I'm saying thanks for sharing. Next. Thanks for sharing. Yes, you're very loud. I know you really want that food. And guess what? When you're hungry again, you can gladly have that. Why don't we have that for a little bit of, as part of lunch? Why don't we have that a little bit as part of dinner? Right? I don't have to make those cravings and that food bad or wrong. I'm just working with that head that can go crazy wanting food. That's part of this. That is part of this journey. For those of you 30 day challengers that are feeling into your body, yes, expect there are times where your head's going to go crazy. Inner circle members, that's where you are going to feel that conversation in your head saying, I just want food. Yeah, I know. Well, I hear you. You just want food. Are you open? Are you willing to wait until you're hungry to have it then? I know you want food and I also know you want to have a thinner, lighter body. So are you open to navigating and working through that conversation, that screaming, that yelling? And then here's what's happened. So maybe you have an amazing night. You have one good night and the next night falls to crap. Okay, you had one good night. We're going to just keep trying again. Let's segment ritual, okay? Right? Imagine it happening the way you want. That's why when I say step number one, you have to be clear. How do you want your evenings to go? If you're in your naturally thin, ideal, beautiful body, you're feeling alive, you're feeling amazing, you're feeling fulfilled with your life, how do you want it to go? There have been times in my life where I felt, you know, when I was single and I would feel like, I'm lonely, I'm bored, I'm this or that. Okay, that was an opportunity for me to know that's what I'm experiencing, lonely and boredom. So guess what? Let's find ways to fill up my day, my evening, that that space in my heart. And so I would listen to podcasts. I don't think there were podcasts back then. 10 years ago, maybe. Um, I would listen, but I would listen to audio trainings. I would listen to things like this. I would listen to music. I'd take long baths. I would light candles. I would fill that time with me time in the evening when I was single. Now I fill it with, I still crave that that ritual and I'm not ever gonna make myself wrong for wanting to watch TV. <laughs> I'm gonna watch TV. I wanna watch TV, I wanna numb out. I wanna sometimes numb out in front of my phone. I sometimes wanna just read. That's what I wanna do. That is enough in my life when I think about who I wanna be for years and years and years and having this patterning, that's who I want to be. Somebody who can go on a walk after dinner, who can read or watch TV or, or relaxes or talks with my husband or hangs out or whatever. That's what I want to be. I don't want it to be related to food and neither do you. I know you don't want this. So it's okay if you have a good day and then a bad day and then a bad day. Because guess what? Just keep focusing on this. Because then if you have two good days of the week, then that can turn into three and that can turn into four and that can turn into it. It's when you forget it all together and you throw all of this away and you go, oh, I'm just broken. No, you're not. There's a reason. There's a reason why you're turning to food at, at night. There's a reason why this connection has happened. It's probably for a release, relaxation, nurturing, love, connection, procrastination, comfort, but is that what you want it to look like long-term? Do you want to keep being somebody who's comforting yourself with food for the rest of your life? No, I know you don't. So well, how could you comfort yourself? 
How could you help feel more connected and less lonely? How could you fill that space with things that actually will give you the joy and actually what you need? Because food, maybe for those five, 10 minutes, it's doing that or 20, 30, 40. <laughs> but it's also making you feel sad in the morning when you wake up and go, oh man, why did I do that? Today's gonna be different. And I know that feeling of being on that like hamster wheel of today's gonna be different. It's not. Today's gonna be different. Not. Because who we are in the morning is different than who we are in the evening. There's a reason for that. Your brain is actually designed. It gets tired of making all these decisions. That's why when you do segment ritual intending, I want you to start doing it in the morning, in the afternoon when your head is strong. But definitely in the evening before all of this happens, if you can set up a new intention for your evening, you can create a new evening. Your brain is magnificent. You are so magnificent. Of course, think of all the rituals you do that are totally unconscious that you've programmed into your life. Things that you may or may not want to do, like loading the dishwasher, unloading the dishwasher. All these things that you do all the time. You can be somebody who has the identity, this is important, who has the identity of being somebody who eats only when you're hungry, who honors your body. And when you're not hungry and when the kitchen is closed at night, you fill your life, your heart, your connections up with other things. Food is not the option because I know that's not what you want. But I also know how convincing, how, how food can just call your name. So that's why I want you to be really aware that your brain might call out to you, which is why sometimes when I'm, when I've done this before, when I've changed this habit, I make myself successful beforehand. I go star my calendar at night saying, oh yeah, this is going to be an awesome night <laughs> because that sets the intention that I'm going to have an awesome night. I'm not going to turn to food. I'm going to make this a night without late night eating. And I am determined to do that. And I'm starring it. I already decided I'm going to be successful. That's the power of making the decision. Okay, so my question to all of you is this. Are you right now making the decision to get in front of your late night eating by choosing to be somebody who no longer turns to food in the evening? To be somebody who deals with your feelings, deals with life, manages, numbs out, does whatever without food? Who's choosing to be naturally thin, thin within, in the evening? Yes, it all fits with the podcast that I did last week around the idea of hoping versus deciding. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yes, Sue. Awesome. Awesome. Now, let's say you have a rough night. Does that mean there's you're broken, that you can't do this? Does that mean that it can't happen for you? Does that mean that um, you're going to give all this up? No, you just come back to the next day. Look at it, guys. Look at it. When I look at times where I'm breaking down, I just go, oh, okay, I broke down last night. What happened? I just look at it so that I could have a plan for the next day. Oh, okay, so maybe that needs to be part of my plan for the segment ritual intending now. Oh, I forgot to think about that idea. Mm, I forgot to think about that part where my kids come up and want and bring me candy or want candy late at night. Hmm, I forgot to include that. How am I going to be with that? And then you just start incorporating these pieces. I love this. I love all the thumbs up. Yay. And those of you on the phone, you can hit star two. That lets me see that you're doing it too. Yay. I love it. Awesome, you guys. So good. So good. Yay. I love seeing it on the phone too. Great guys. So making this decision, making this decision. Now here's what I want you to think about. This is the cool thing. What gets to happen for your weight and your body by making this powerful decision? By showing up in a way where you are naturally thin, you are thin within, 
in the evening. You get to honor your body. You get to go on walks. You get to feel amazing in the morning. You can listen to me every night. Do it. Go for it. Gosh, when I hired a coach years ago for around business, I listened to her all the time. I still have her in my phone because this conversation, it's training your brain. So do it. Yes, you should. You could use this all night. Every, not all night. I mean, I'm not going to talk for that long. But, but you could definitely use this to help support it or a segment of this. If you like a certain section, go to... No, you know, go to minute 18 when I'm talking about this or that or the other. Absolutely. Who do you get to be? Like, really think about this, everyone. Who do you get to be as somebody who no longer eats at night? What gets to happen for your body? What gets to happen for how you show up in the morning and how you feel about yourself in the morning? You know what gets to happen? You get to lose weight. You get to feel in control. You get to feel empowered you get to deal with your crap in your head at night that's telling you mm, you get to practice dealing with that which is actually where you need to practice all over the place in order to lose weight and keep it off who do you get to be by doing this work this will change the relationship you have to food in the evening and then you get to be somebody who feels more in control of your eating, more in control. You, got, you get to walk into that closet and start saying, whoa, clothes are getting, that's real nice. This is real nice, a result of this. This is helping me fit into those smaller size clothes. This is helping me like my body even more in front of the mirror. This is helping me be the person that I'm meant to be. Because overstuffing my body at night, going unconscious with food, that is not who you're meant to be. There's a reason why that happens. Absolutely. There's a reason that this got programmed in. We don't need to be mad about that reason. We don't need to feel badly about it. But this is what gets to happen for you. And I want you to think about what gets to happen for you. And that feeling, and some of you are feeling feelers, some of you are seers, so vision-wise, you're like, I see that. Some of you are like, oh my God, I feel it, I feel it. So connect to that. You get to be healthy and energetic. Heck yes. Heck yes. And what does that mean to your life to feel healthier and energetic and feeling like you know how to deal with that part of your brain that's screaming in your ear at night saying, come on, it's just a little bit, only a little bit. It doesn't matter. It's actually healthy. Guess what? It does matter. <laughs> I don't care if it's healthy. If you're not, if your body doesn't need food, guess what it does with it? It stores it. Because it doesn't need it. So it doesn't matter if it's healthy. If your body doesn't need it, if your body is not hungry for food, then this is your opportunity to do the internal work to say, okay, I got you. I know. You. Oh, wow. You're really getting loud in my ear. Whoa, Marna. Whoa. You are screaming in my ear. Yes. I know you really want this food and you can have it when you're hungry. Tonight, I'm choosing to be thin within. Tonight, I'm choosing to be the person I want to be. And so... No, thank you. I'm going to sip on my water. I'm going to sip on my lemon water. I'm going to have a spindrift. I'm going to sip on, you know, I'm going to grab some ice. I'm going to chew some gum. I'm going to go brush my teeth. Whatever you need. Okay. Free and thin. Happy or free. Oh, great. All right. I am so excited. Are you in? You ready? Let's all practice this. Imagine what gets to happen just as a result of this class training podcast alone. This could be your game changer. This could change it all for you. This could help you lose 10, 15, 20, 30, 80 pounds. Because a lot of times what's happening is from dinner on or that three o'clock on, your energy starts to go down. If you need natural boosts to bring your energy up, I'd much rather you do some jumping jacks. I'd much rather you do some breathing. I'd much rather you visualize 
you know, who you want to be. I'd much rather you do other things than feel like I used to do that food was going to be the thing to give me the boost of energy. No, it just made me tired. It just made it worse. All right, Sue, you're welcome. All right, I'm glad you're in, Lisa. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Now, any questions that you have, this is your time. Any of you from the 30-Day Challenge, any of you um, Inner Circle members, any of you who are just finding me, I want to know. Do you need anything? What do you need? Do you have any questions? If you do, just write in the comment section, and I am happy to help you in any way that I can if you have questions. If not, you are very welcome, Sue. I'm so glad you're here. Teresa, I'm so glad you were able to make it live. You've been making more live, girl. That shows some that shows some good, some good juju, some good intention. Way to put yourself in this process first. Good job. I know that's not always easy. And listen, for those of you who can't make it live, no worries. Listen, listen, listen. Watch me. Uh, listen to me repeat this over and over. I want your brain to just be really, I want your brain to know how awesome you are. That's why I do this work so that you feel so good about yourself, so proud of what you can accomplish that you want to do this, that you want at night to say, you know what? I'm awesome. I don't want to do this. I want to be somebody who's thin within, who's naturally thin, who lives a life, who is in in harmony with food and not is feeling compulsive with food. And I know how it feels to feel compulsive and out of control with food. And I don't want, and I know that there are solutions that can help you. And this is one of them. Okay. So question, how do I, this is great. Love these questions. How do you overcome, how to overcome resistance to change and procrastination? Yeah. Resistance is a whole big, big thing. <clears throat> so here's here's the only thing you have to know about resistance. Whenever I feel resistance, all I ask myself, Christine, is this. What am I willing to do? What am I open to doing? That's it. What is one, and I may even give it a small frame and frame it for myself. What is one simple thing that I'm open to doing today to move my health and my body forward? That's it. And it might be, you know what? I'm willing to have a little bit more water. I'm willing and open to, um, when I'm eating, to take one bite less. I'm willing to go to the mailbox and walk back. I'm willing, like, what are you willing to do? So that's, that's um, procrastination, resistance. It's just, <clears throat> it's, it's real. It can be real where you just feel like this block almost, like, I don't want to do anything. I want to be thin, but I don't want to have to get there. I get it. I mean, we're all right there with you. So dealing with the resistance is just about your willingness. What am I willing and open to do today that fits into my life? That will also help me move my body forward. Maybe I'm willing when I get hungry to throw a couple vegetables inside of my meal. I'm willing to listen to hunger. I'm not willing to listen to hunger, but I'm willing to have three meals today. Okay. I'm willing to go for a walk. Like so, okay. That's how you deal with resistance. I usually have dinner at five, but I go to sleep between one and two in the morning. I'm really hungry around 10. What should I do? Okay. Oh, I'd love to know more about. <clears throat> so that's kind of like me. <laughs> I mean, I'm not always going to bed at one and two, but I'm going to bed sometimes really late like that too. And we have dinner around six and sometimes around that like nine, 10, 11, I'm hungry again. Typically when we're hungry at that time, let me ask you, are you eating something like a bowl of, are you having a salad? <laughs> Usually not. Usually that's not what we're having at 10 o'clock at night. So you have to ask yourself what you want it to look like. Is, are you eating dinner maybe a little bit too early? Does it make sense for you to have maybe something like a little snack at 10? Or does it make sense for you to go to bed a little bit earlier so that you don't have this screaming, craving food you know, uh, this intense craving for food because, you know, from five to 10 o'clock, yeah, you probably are hungry. But the problem with that is that if you're just never, if you're eating, I don't have a problem if you eat, if you're hungry, then 
I just want to know if there's other things that are not supporting the health and wellness of you holistically, then maybe we make some adjustments either a little bit late later or what are you eating at 10? You know, are you having something that really works well for your body? Because at night it's our body's amazing. Our body does this amazing job of recovering recuperating, regenerating. It's amazing. So the more we can give it space to do that without having it doing a lot of digesting, ideally, then that works really well. Many naturally thin people, there are naturally thin people that do have 10 o'clock um, snacks at night because they don't go to sleep till one or two. But what I do find with them is oftentimes then there's this gap in the morning. They may not eat then until you know, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2 the next day. So if let's say I do get really hungry, it's 10 o'clock and I cannot stop thinking about food, like feeling food, like I'm so hungry and I eat something, I probably am not going to be hungry again until, I don't know, 1, 2, 3 the next day. So just keep that in mind, like how that whole thing cycles through, okay? Um, you are welcome. I'm glad you love this. You guys are awesome. How did it... How long did it take to retrain your brain for new thoughts? So <clears throat> because I built in um, reward, that's why reward is so important. It speeds everything up. So when I was doing this late night eating work, oh gosh, in two, three weeks, all of a sudden, I was giving myself lots of rewards, everybody. I mean, not even in the way of like material things, but I was telling myself I was awesome. Like, wow, look at you. You're awesome. You're so great. Look at you. You're making this happen. Way to do that, Marna. You're so awesome. Keep it up, girl. Way to be somebody who's who's um, naturally thin, thin with thin, you know, Way to do this at night. So I gave myself lots of that like encouragement to make it and speed it up so that I wanted to do it at night. When you get to the point where it first feels like force, like like when you're creating a new habit, sometimes it feels like, oh, uh, it's a little forcey. But then all of a sudden it becomes, it's like when you feel like you're really good at something, all of a sudden you want to stay really good at it. I wanted then two, three, four, five weeks in, like, quickly two weeks in because I was giving myself so many rewards I wanted to keep doing it because I was telling myself I was awesome <laughs> so I wanted to keep feeling awesome and then when you start seeing the results on your clothes and in your body then that adds to all of this it's like oh wow we're really moving the dial here for my body too okay um sometimes I can't tell if I'm actually hungry Maybe I'm odd. Nope, you're not in that, but it's almost like I can't trust my brain because it will trick me. Yeah, so here's some tips. If you're like, mm, I don't know if I'm actually feeling hunger, the more you can put your hands on your stomach, I don't know if you guys can see my stomach right here. If you can see it, like the more, this is stomach, rib cage, <laughs> rib cage right there, your stomach, okay? A lot of times we think it's real low, that's your intestines. Stomach for me, right here. Everybody's stomach's different. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put my hands on my stomach and ask, this I did all the time in the beginning, I do it totally naturally now, but I would ask, am I still, am I hungry? So I'm looking to bring the head part, because you're, you're bright, your brain has to interpret your hunger. How do you know, Sharon, when you have to go to the bathroom? How do you know when you have to go to the bathroom? You feel it, right? Your head processes the feeling and tells you, oh, I have to go to the bathroom, right? It has to come up here for something to happen, right? So this is the tricky part. Is it is it head hunger? Am I just thinking I'm hungry? Am I feeling it inside of my body? Or is there something happening here, which is oftentimes just thirst in my mouth? So... That's where I love using the whole process of or the thought around going to the bathroom because you feel it, don't you? So that's where I want you to just start getting. And, and for me, I was explaining this to somebody today. It's like a hollow feeling. It's like this empty feeling that's happening inside of my tummy. It, and some people feel, you know, wait, wait a, a long time and they feel the, the gurglings and grumblings. But before that, you can eat too, because sometimes that feels like it's waiting too long. 
but it's just this hollow emptiness in my stomach. Some people feel it as they start getting really irritable and grumpy. Some people just feel like, oh, I'm losing my focus. I know something's off in my body. So it's physical. So I want you to just play with that. That is, you are not broken at all. This is totally, it can be totally normal. There's, I would say around five to 10% of people just don't feel hunger at all. And that is because they've had gastric bypass, a sleeve, trauma, something's gone on. And if that's the case, then what we do is we look at, okay, let's have three meals with nothing in between. And you can always do that too. But I really love everybody to just hunker in and feel and practice that hunger because it's so important to you experiencing your body. And I think that that will really, really help you. Just think about going to the bathroom. How do you know when to go to the bathroom? You just feel it. When you, when I think about satisfied, I find I want to rebel and it is causing tension. I have come up with just right. Any other thoughts of a new word? Yeah. So satisfied can be neutral. It can be feeling great. It can be light. It can be lean. It could be um, I'm feeling spiritual. I'm feeling connected. I'm feeling right. Like you're right. It sometimes these words trigger people, and I totally am. I'm always aware of my words because I don't want to trigger you. And even then, I still do at times. So um, our words create a feeling inside of us. This is why we know the work I'm doing works because our thoughts create our feelings. When you say the word satisfied, somebody feels an amazing sensation. Another person goes, "Oh, I'm triggered by that word." I want to rebel. Okay, that's fine. Is there a word that feels like how you want to feel at the end of a meal that you can relate to and ignites an excitement inside of you? And that's how you would know you hit the right word. Okay, great question, Sharon. What is one small step I am willing to and open to doing? Answer to resistance. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie, for being my scribe. You're awesome. I'm hoping. Okay, good, Marie. I'm glad that helps. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Listen, if you still feel like, oh, I wish I would have signed up for the 30-day challenge, we're only into day three. You can catch up. I'll give you day one, two, and three. You'll have to do a little work to catch up, but you are more than welcome to join in because by Friday, Saturday, it closes down and then I'll put everybody back onto a wait list and we'll open doors again, I don't know, in July or so. That's what we'll do. That's when we'll do the next one. If let's say you say, I'm not ready for that, take the free course. Let me help you. Let me help transform your body from your brain, from an inside out approach. This podcast episode session training alone will help you transform big time. It will help you change your late night eating habits. If you feel tonight coming up and you're feeling that mm, internal urge to eat, I would highly recommend you get this link because I'm not going to have the pod, this podcast available till tomorrow. Get this link. Listen, 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 okay? Use my energy in the evening to help support and inspire and help you get the results that you want. Decide, just make sure you've decided who you want to be in the evening. From that vantage point, from that place, segment ritual and then reward. Those are your three. All right, everyone, sending you so much love, so much healing, so much help. I can't believe we've hit over 200,000 listens on the podcast. I am so eternally grateful to all of you. Thank you for sharing and loving and listening this. Thank you for your really kind reviews. Keep it up. Don't stop. No, <laughs> keep, keep spreading the word. It means so much to me, and I so appreciate all of you doing that. All right, everybody, have an amazing day. You deserve it. All right.